today we're gonna take a look at why this could be the best tripod for your mirrorless camera. Hey, how's it going guys? Hope you had a great Thanksgiving weekend. If you're like most of us, you're probably still tired from eating all the turkey. So we're gonna keep this one kind of short, as in like less than 10 minutes. Yeah, that's kind of short for this channel. Uh, so I do want to mention like a couple things that no one talks about. And I'm gonna give you one pro tip at the end of the video. And if this tripod is not for you, at least you get to know like what to look for in a tripod. So let's go. Now, in order to talk about a good tripod, we're gonna talk about some pain points of using a bad tripod. Past year and a half, I filmed like maybe about 45 weddings so I used a lot of tripod every single one of those weddings we got toasts and ceremonies so definitely a lot of tripod usage and before that I used to travel a lot trying to make travel films so I used a lot of tripod in that scenarios too now the first pain point of a tripod if it weighs more than your camera it's gonna be the weight of the tripod so if you don't feel like bringing a second body for your travel just because it's so heavy you're not gonna want to bring a tripod that weighs more than that second body and of course there's a size factor I mean tripod usually aren't the smallest gear in your camera bags and third most tripods aren't very nature friendly as in they're not very well weatherproofed. One of the worst enemies of a tripod is gonna be the sand from desert or beach. And the fourth pain point of most tripod is gonna be the fact that tripods are deceivingly flimsy as in they look hard on the outside but inside they're soft and tender like me. Actually, I'm not even hard outside. So next pain point has to do with the ball head area of a tripod. One, they're really hard to level and two, let's face it, they all sag. Solution to all these problems, Mitsure ST125 and K10X ball head. Anything with 10X on it sounds pretty cool because it will 10X your film. No, just kidding. Maybe 2X. It's like 10X the price, but you know. So speaking of camera weight, I did pre-weigh a camera for us. So the camera I'm using right now up here is Sony a7 III with Sigma 24 to 70 DG DN, which approximately weighs about three pounds and five ounces, which is about 1500 grams. Now, do you think this tripod with the fluid head weighs less than that? Let's find out. All right, here we go. And this tripod weighs 1534 grams. So approximately the weight of that camera, but that's with the heavy fluid head. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this fluid head because that's the heaviest part really feels like. And this tripod by itself weighs 1153 grams, which is two pounds and eight ounces guys and i'm telling you this in person because i just can't tell you how light this feels i mean like this whole entire thing feels lighter than a camera and you might be thinking at this point all right say does that feel like really cheap then like but it's actually not they call this hard oxidation carbon fiber so all the legs are carbon fiber but they're not like those creaky cheap carbon fiber material this feels like super solid and yeah like each of the knob just feels very stiff and solid. So it's not cheap quality feeling, it's just like really light. And that might not seem like a huge deal until you have to always carry around and reposition tripods. For example, a lot of the wedding films I film, the father of bride, yeah, they always wanna give a speech and everybody else gave a speech like right here and all of a sudden father right all the way down there and I don't know why he goes all the way down there but he gives a speech yeah you're gonna have to lift up that tripod reposition it over there real quick and get that and you don't want to struggle with any of the tripod you just want to like lift it with your finger almost and just put it down and that's how it feels like with this tripod and at this point you have successfully repositioned the tripod but now you gotta worry about leveling the whole thing and lucky for you this ball head has levels everywhere you got level over here you got level over here and even on the tripod guys you got like a level over here so this is like level heaven for anyone who's really wants to like perfectly level during a wedding shoot you're not going to be looking at all those levels only thing you really care about is is your ball head going to sag and this ball head guys is the least saggiest small ball head i have ever seen because let's face it guys it's a condition you think you have the composition perfectly lined up everything is perfect as soon as you let go of your hand from your camera the whole thing does this and that's not good because we're all trying to perform on the spot and while we're at it let's talk about the size of this tripod so this tripod itself is 17 inches long and that number is significant because this thing fits perfectly into most carry-on case and for filmmakers we have this hard case usually so let me bring this real quick all right here we go so this is technically nanuk 940 but if you have a pelican it's about the same size they're all standard so this is about the size that you carry on an airplane so does it fit inside here is the question and this tripod fits 
perfectly in this slot right here, guys. And not only does it actually fit, I have whole entire space here, guys, for a second one. So I could fit two tripods in a carry-on case. And that to me, guys, is game changer. Let me go ahead and put this away real quick. So one of the highlights of this tripod is gonna be the diameter of the tripod. So the whole entire diameter, guys, is about three inches. That is insane. So you might be also thinking, does that mean this tripod is short? Actually, no, this is like 59 inch tripod fully extended. So I'm about 5'8", um, and this thing with the camera on top stand as tall as me. Now 59 inch for most tripod is about average length. So what makes this tripod so special? And that is gonna be this leg. So these legs aren't just any legs. They are 100% waterproof. They're calling it WPS waterproof system and these gaskets here makes a really tight seal and this is a big deal because most tripods yes they don't have any electronics in them they can get wet so technically they are waterproof in a sense that it doesn't get damaged on the spot but over time there's a problem with this this is a open tripod and you know it's not a bad tripod it has a very similar style leg but problem with this is that water gets inside the leg and stays in the leg for a little bit and when you take it to salt water even when you rinse out the actual tripod afterwards yeah that water slowly leaks out and makes that bottom i don't know if you guys can see it yeah that bottom metal part is completely rusted out and i can't even yeah, twist that anymore. So that's one issue. Second issue is gonna be the sand. As you guys know, sand, yeah, you just can't avoid sand. Just ask Anakin. I don't like sand. And it gets everywhere. So after your lovely shoot at the beach, what you wanna do is rinse out the tripod. And you know, because sand's gonna get all over that shaft, you wanna maybe take out the whole entire leg and make sure, oh, oh, this is a problem, guys. Look at this. You see all that? Yeah, that is a problem with most tripod. They're sturdy on the outside, but once you take it apart, yeah, this is gonna take forever to put it back together. So I'm just gonna put this aside. So let me show you what Suray tripod does. So if I take this leg out to make sure all the sand is out, rinse out properly, yeah, Suray tripod, even the inside is high quality. They don't have like little pieces that's gonna fall out and this is locked in there pretty good. Technically, yes, you can take this apart, but it doesn't like flims out and like fall apart and, and you'll be able to put this back fairly quickly and that's a big deal because last thing you want to do is you know play with little parts of tripods. Yeah, you just gotta line up the leg, insert. There you go. Okay, a little grease there, but no biggie. And that's important guys, because sand, no matter how weatherproof and waterproof tripod is, they're gonna get in the leg and it's gonna make that horrible scratching sound. So at least this tripod, you know you can take out the legs without issue and be able to clean that well. So that will make this tripod last much longer. So some of the other cool feature of this tripod is the fact that it has a quarter 20 over here and the 3 8 thread here. So you can mount your like 360 cameras or your audio equipment really, really well. The only con that I really see in this tripod is the fact that you can't go low angle really, really quick. So the legs are secured by this little clamp. You, so you stick that out and it locks in right there but it automatically locks in right there so you can't go beyond that. So even if you try to undo that, and let me see if I can do this for you real quick. Yeah, so locks in, which is nice. I like that it's so secure. And the center column, of course, comes up here. So this is the lowest you can ever go on this tripod, right? With this mode. Let's see how tall this is. So this is gonna be approximately 11 inches tall, right at that tip. But if you wanna go lower than that, and you want your camera to like smell the ground, you'll have to go invert it this way. So what you gotta do is unscrew this hook, loosen the center column, take out the center column, reinsert it back, screw the hook back, secure the center column, now you got your low angle shot. So that took a little bit of time, whereas in like this open tripod, let me show you, the legs do hyperextend all the way up, so you are able to go low angle without doing all that stuff, just real quick. Uh, now, the drawback is that it doesn't like lock, so it's not secure, secure, but if you wanna get this shot real quick, it does allow you to do that. Oh, right now we're missing a leg. Um, but if you had three legs, you'd be able to do that. 
So yeah, Surrey ST125, I think it's a very, very nice tripod. Now there is one model called ST124, so it's a little bit confusing. So ST125 is a five section tripod. So there are four sections on the legs and they're considering the center column as another section. So it's five sections total. 124 has one less section. So you might be thinking, is that shorter? It's actually three inches taller. However, when you travel, it's about two and a half inches longer. So so yes, it has less sections, but the sections are longer. So I chose the ST125 because it's a little bit shorter, which is just tall enough to clear all the ajumas during like Korean wedding because they're going to be all up on there with their iPhones and worse, like with the iPads. So yeah, it's a perfect height. I think the only thing that kind of competes with this is going to be the Peak Design carbon fiber tripod, which and not really in the same class in terms of price because that thing's like 500 to 600 dollars which is pretty pricey um, that one has an advantage because the legs are different so that one has the lever system for the legs whereas in this is like a twist lock uh, some people have problems with twist lock because like it takes a lot longer to like set up but here's a little pro tip when you undo this thing instead of just unlocking each one of them and extending out I like grab this whole thing and unlock all three at once and there you go so there is a small pro tip for you and compared to Peak Design, I think the biggest difference really is the last leg. So the last leg when you extend this fully has to be sturdy. See this here is pretty thick and when you extend this all the way out, your tripod doesn't feel like it's gonna like topple over. The whole entire tripod weight limit on this tripod particular is 26 and a half pounds. Now no one actually has a 26 and a half pound mirrorless setup. I mean, if you do, God help you. But the fact is that's more of an overhead. So this tripod can't handle that much weight. The Peak Design is rated around 20 pounds. I used the Peak Design several times because I'm a second shooter for Envo Films and he used to have that tripod. And yeah, this thing here is much more stable when it comes to fully extended height. Now I did mention Peak Design costs around like five to $600. So Suray tripod, carbon fiber version, also isn't the cheapest tripod. This here is about $340. Now right now is the holiday season so they're going to have some sales going on. So whatever I find the best sale, I'm going to put it in the link in the description. So you guys go ahead and check it out. But $340, that's quite a bit for tripod. I mean, if you do the math, that's a little more than $100 per leg. So you might be saying, say, I don't know, man, I could probably maybe afford like two legs. So if that is your budget, you don't have to get this whole entire thing. So the tripod by itself is much cheaper. This is gonna be about $100 less than the whole entire package. So, and get your own like fluid head. Yeah, that will cut down the cost quite a bit because this ball head, yeah, it's nice, no sag but it is kind of expensive. So even if this whole entire tripod doesn't fit your budget, I hope this video was somewhat helpful because you're able to now find out what is the pain point of tripods and what to look for in the future. You now have one leg up on the situation of buying new tripods. So thank you for watching guys. Till next time, stay steady. All right, I'm still trying to put this tripod back together. Like this, like imagine like losing this at the beach. Like you'd be screwed. Okay, all right, hold this. Ah, crap, it's not lined up. Okay. Yes, okay, we're good. <laughs>